guys, this is Brittany from Imagine This, an art and music studio for both children and adults, and today we are going over pre-art's lesson. Pre-art is our youngest class from ages 2 to 5, but anyone is welcome to join. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over the supplies. This week we are doing birdhouses. So, if you came by the studio, you should have gotten a little pack like this. There will be all sorts of craft stuff inside, but what's most important and absolutely necessary for this craft is you are going to need string, which will be provided. This little carton, also provided. And then some other supplies that you will need, but we will not be providing, will be some glue. You can use regular glue, or if you're a little impatient, you can use some hot glue, but we strongly suggest parent supervision with hot glue. A hole punch. Now, if you don't have a hole punch, it's okay. Just use a pair of scissors. Some scissors. And then if you want to decorate with markers or crayons, you're more than welcome to do that as well. Before we fold our house together, one thing I want you to do is you'll notice that there are four flappy tabs. Above it, there should be little squares. I want you to choose one of these squares and I want you to cut a hole in it. If we're going to do a birdhouse, we need a way for the bird to get into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors. And I'm just going to pick the one right here. You can pick any of the four squares. Any side will show up, but I'm just going to pick this one. It will be the easiest to cut. I'm going to slightly fold it, not completely bend, and cut into the paper. Now I'm just going to do a little circle, but you can do any shape you want, as long as it's a shape that is bird friendly, or maybe even squirrels, who knows? I'm just going to cut a circle into it. And there we have our little hole for our bird friend to go in. Right now, these four little flaps at the bottom, we are going to fold them together. And how we're going to do this is I'm going to take this side, this side does not have a sticky thing you'll notice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start folding these sides, one on top of the other, and then the side that has the sticky part on it, I'm going to peel off the tape. Then I'm going to stick it right onto those other flaps on the bottom. Now it's still a little wonky, but that's okay. If needed, you can add some tape onto it or some glue to keep it all together more nicely. But this next part should help as well. So you'll notice that on this side, there's a little strip right here that has a long piece of sticky tape. Now what you're going to do is we're going to fold this long strip on the inside of our birdhouse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off the sticky piece, fold it inside of the box, press firmly to make sure that stays, and now we have a good little box. Now if there's any hanging over from the strip, you can just cut that away. I'll do that later. Now this next part is the hardest part. So what I'm going to do is I like to focus on the sides. And you'll notice there's a triangle shape with two other sides to it. So what I like to do is I press towards the top, trying to make sure that I keep a nice square at the bottom, but ultimately going for sort of a milk carton shape. And once I have a nice folded edge on this side, I do the same to the other side as well. Again, make sure that the bottom stays intact. And then you're just going to press both sides together. They should fold equally. If you have a little trouble, you can manipulate it from the inside with that helpful little hole we made for the birds. All right, so now I have the overall shape, but it needs to stick together. So you'll notice that on the inside of the top fold, there's another piece of sticky tape. Unpeel that piece, and then stick the two sides together. And there you have it. Now you'll notice the bottom's a little unfolded right here, so if I want, I can go in with tape or glue, glue that together to make it more firm. But other than that, that is how you make your birdhouse. You can decorate it any way you want. We gave you confetti, some black lace, maybe even a little nest. There's all sorts of materials, so just have fun, make it unique, and make it your own. But the last thing you absolutely need to do once you have your beautiful birdhouse all done, we need a string on it so we can hang it up so our little bird friends can go inside. So either with a hole punch or scissors, what you're going to do is you're going to take it, 
get on this top strip right here and make a tiny little hole for a string. You'll see I have a hole right here. And then with a pink piece of string, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop it through and tie it. That way I can hang this up and my bird friends can go inside. But of course, to welcome our friends, we provide a little treat for you as well. So inside your bag, you should notice a small bag of bird seed. Now putting the bird seed inside, do not put it in when you begin the craft. Once you are done, everything's dry, you're ready to be hung up, what you're going to do, you're going to angle your birdhouse backwards with the hole in the front. You're just going to pour a little bit of bird seed inside of the container. You don't have to fill the bottom of it. We want room for our bird friends to come inside, but just a little bit and that scent and those seeds should be really welcoming to birds. So our second activity for today is one where we are going to make it look like rain on a window. So what you will need for this one is a cup of water. We have a disposable cup. Some food dye. I'm going to use blue since that's the color of rain, but you're free to try any color that you wish. A paintbrush. Some tape. A cookie sheet. We have an art tin right here, but a cookie sheet is bigger and works just as great. And then you should have a piece of watercolor paper within your kit that we gave you. If not, cardstock works just as great as well. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cup of water and I'm going to put some food dye in it. We have some fancy food dye here at the studio, but any old food dye works great as long as the pigment shows up in the water. I'm just going to put one or two drops in there. Then I'm going to stir it with my paintbrush. Get a nice dark blue color in there. And once I have my color all mixed, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the water on my brush and I'm just going to paint the bottom of my cookie sheet. Now water does not paint the same as like acrylic paints or oil paints. It's going to look more like little droplets, and that's exactly what we want if we want it to look like rain on a window. So I'm just going to dot water all over the place and have fun with it, maybe smear it around a bit, see what droplets I can create. Smear that colored water all over the place. Maybe a drop over here. Okay, now I think I have just the perfect amount of rain on my window. Now, one thing you'll notice with windows is many of them tend to have panes. Now, panes are just like little lines on or in the window. And so how we're going to create the illusion of window panes is I'm going to take this tape and I'm going to tee it off just like I did on this one. Now, people have different windows, so it doesn't have to be a T-shape. You can do multiple panes, but I'm going to just be doing the regular T-shape. One tip that I have for you though is if your tape is super sticky and you're afraid it's not going to come off your paper, try rubbing it across a pair of jeans or any fabric and that will make it a little less sticky but just sticky enough that it stays on your paper. So I'm just going to lay it across my piece of paper and make a T-shape out of it. Just gonna Tap it on my pants to make it a little less sticky. So now that our window is all ready to go, what we're going to do is we're going to lay this piece of paper taped down on top of the cookie sheet. Now you can lightly press, but honestly just laying the paper on top of the water, it will absorb the coloring. I'm just going to pat a little bit to create a little extra design in there. It doesn't have to stay too long. So I'm going to pick it up. Look at all that beautiful rain on our window. Now it's still pretty wet and drippy, so I'm going to lay this off to the side to dry. But what I'm going to do now, luckily, we created one earlier, so I can continue with this one. Now of course whenever it rains, we see more than just rain on our window. We see trees, maybe birds, or whatever you can see outside of your window. So while the window pane is still on with this tape, what I'm going to do is draw a tree, maybe some grass, and some birds really quickly. I'll move this out of the way really quick. Some birds over here. It's okay if you color on the tape because when you peel it off, it will come out really well. It won't stay there.
me and then put some grass in here. Just really quick. I want you to take your time though. I'm just filling this out quickly for time's sake. All right, so there I have my rainy day window. Now, before I peel this off, there are going to be some white sections on here that make it a little hard to see the window pane. So what I'm going to do, I can take a marker or a pencil. I'm just going to quickly outline my tape. That way I can see the window pane. Now, once you peel off the tape, you can color the window pane any color you like. Not all window panes are white or they're just all different colors. So customize your rainy day picture however you want. So I have my window pane all nice and outlined. Once your thing is all dry and you have your picture, what you're going to do is you're going to peel up your tape. There's one piece, and just one more. Voila, you have a beautiful rainy day through a window. Now you're free to add any detail, like I said earlier, I might have missed this side right here, but there you have it. So we'd love to see your pictures and have a good day.